Hello, and welcome to a lesson on installing vCloud Director. Now, this lesson's going to be pretty detailed. I mean, you'll really have to hold on tight because we're going to go very technical and very deep into everything you need to do to install vCloud Director. That includes the database, the Red Hat Enterprise Linux server, the SSL certificates, and actually installing the vCloud Director software. Let's begin at the beginning, which is the planning and the design because you don't want to just plow headfirst into this thing. It's kind of a beast. Um, once you've done it a couple times, you'll think, oh, man, I, I can't believe I ever thought that was hard. But I know the first time I did it, I thought it was pretty intimidating. So the best way to start is to go over what you'll need ahead of time. You know, what software do you need to download, what IPs do you need to set, all that good stuff. So I'm going to give you kind of the shopping mall version of the you are here. And that here's the lab design and what we're trying to build in this vCloud Director course. Now, right now, the arrow is pointing towards the VCD cells, the vCloud Director server itself, because that's all we're doing in this lesson. The rest of it will be covered in different lessons, but this is where you are right now. In the planning and design phase of vCloud Director, we need to do a little bit of homework. Ah, nobody likes homework, right? But it's important because without this information and without having done this work ahead of time, you're going to be in for a lot of frustration. So let's just get it done now and get it out of the way. For the object identities, basically I'm just saying we need to go out and, and create kind of some personality for the server before we go and install it. And we need to figure out what IP addresses we'll be using for the vCloud Director server. We need one for the web service or HTTP service, but it's hard to say HTTP, so I like to say web service. The other one's for the console proxy service. And basically, the web service is what we connect to when we open our browser, and the console proxy service is what we connect to when we want to open up the console for a virtual machine. We'll also want to go ahead and make DNS A records for both those IPs. And that's just the relationship of this name goes to this IP. And finally, we'll need to determine what the logical name of the VMs need to be. In this lesson, it really just boils down to what are we going to call the virtual machine that's running vCloud Director. Sometimes it's the same as the DNS name, and other times it's different. It's your choice. There's also some requirements that we'll need to meet ahead of time in order to really smooth out this install. The first is the vCloud Director 5.1.1 install bin file. That's kind of like, yeah, of course, if you're installing vCloud, you'll need the installation file. So I think no one's surprised by that one. The other one is we'll need a server running Red Hat Enterprise Linux version 5 or 6. I'll be using version 6.2, which is basically RHEL 6 update 2. That's how you translate the 6.2. We'll also need to grab a file called libxdmcp. It's an RPM package. Basically, this is something that vCloud Director is going to need to operate that Red Hat Enterprise Linux doesn't come with out of the box. And I've got one of those nice little short URLs you can use to go grab that. And finally, we'll need a database. It has to be compatible with vCloud Director, so you're limited to SQL or Oracle. And out in the field, I pretty much see SQL all over the place. So guess what? I'll be using SQL in this demonstration. If you want to look at the complete list of all the databases you could possibly use, there's a link for that on this slide that you can go to. But for this lesson, I will be using MySQL Server in the lab, which is running Microsoft SQL 2008 R2 Enterprise. Do you need Enterprise to do vCloud Director? Absolutely not. I run it in the lab because ah, I'm, I'm into overkill. I just go with the biggest version there was. But you could run 2008 R2 Express, which is completely free, and that's fine. So since I was talking about the database, let's start with configuring the database. Now, a lot of times, this is kind of the more uh, creepy part of the install for most server admins because I'm not a DBA, a database admin. I don't really spend a lot of time in databases. I know enough to get by, and probably you do too because you've had to work with databases for vCenter and Update Manager and things like that. So let's go over the basics of what you need to do to configure the database for vCloud Director. Now, notice we're doing that before we've ever actually even installed Red Hat, or the vCloud Director software. We're doing this very far in advance to get it done. Fortunately, VMware provides some really handy installation scripts. And you can run these scripts to do all the heavy lifting. 
So you can be like, oh, man, look, I installed this SQL database. I'm awesome. And your friends will be like, how did he do that? And in the back, you know, behind closed doors, you just ran a script that someone else gave you. So that's awesome. That's like IT in a nutshell. The script's going to do four things. It's basically going to make the database, do a little bit of housekeeping in the form of some transaction isolation levels and things like that. It's going to make a database user account so that it can control the database. And it's going to assign permissions to the user account, which basically means it's going to make it the owner of the database. That's it. I will note, if you're not into SQL and you don't know what your mode is, you need to use SQL mixed mode authentication. There's two modes that SQL can be in, Windows authentication and mixed mode authentication. We need to make sure it's in mixed mode because otherwise we can't use native SQL accounts. We'd have to use Windows accounts, which is a no-go for vCloud. It needs a native SQL account. So I've opened a remote desktop session to my SQL server, which, if you notice at the top, very creatively named SQL. That's right. I like to keep my lab very easy, and it's almost impossible to forget the name of a SQL server called SQL. So let's dive right into the tool we'll be using on the SQL server to do the database work. If you click Start, Programs, Microsoft SQL, whatever flavor you have, you should have installed or have installed the Management Studio software somewhere on your server. It's either on your desktop, maybe it's on the server. I have mine on the server. Make sure that you have those tools somewhere readily available. Now my account, this uh, Chris account, is full, you know, crazy level admin on everything. So I'm using that to connect. And I'm using a period here for the server name, which means the server that I'm on. If you're connecting from your desktop, you'll need to actually type in the server name. And because the server name is SQL, you kind of think, man, how lazy is this guy if he types a period to save two letters? But, you know, that's how I roll. So now I've got the stu Management Studio open. I'll pull up the script that VMware provides, and we'll go over how exactly it works. So first, let me switch over to the website on VMware so you can see how to get the script. Okay, so I'm on VMware's website, and all I did was I went to the support section, which opens up this big box, and I clicked vCloud Director. And once you do that, it's going to give you a list of all these different support files that you can look at. Now, this is important because you really need to know how to get here on your own. You can't always remember a link. Um, so the first one right here, vCloud Director Install and Upgrade Guide. That's your pot of gold right there. Click on HTML version, and it'll load this page right here. And it won't come directly to this page, you know, this actual piece, but it'll come to the main root. And all I did was I navigated down this little tree to how to configure Microsoft SQL Server database. If you want to cheat, you could just type SQL Server in the search bar, and it'll show you this link. But now you know exactly how to walk your way to this page and kind of to all these directions if you ever need to. So kind of that whole teach a man to fish, he'll never go hungry. I've now fed you for the rest of your life. You know, you're welcome. Okay, so it's telling you how to do the SQL Server database. That's great. This is kind of stuff, blah, blah, blah. And there's the scripts. There's actually four of them. They're all very small. And they all start with this. You see how the text is kind of a different uh, font? And all it starts with the word use. Man, my highlighting's killing me here. There we go. It starts with use, and it ends with go. So that's the first script. And then here's the second script. Again, use to go. The third one, use to go. And okay, guess what? The fourth one, use to go. So you grab all four of those and copy them, and we'll switch over to SQL real quick, and I'll show you the script that I made that contains those four mini scripts. Okay, so we're back on the SQL server, and I'll open a file that I generated called vCloud Query. I put it on my desktop, and it's just a paste of all those different scripts that you saw in there. That's all it is. I just copy and pasted it on over. Nothing that difficult. Now, I did make two changes you might be able to spot it. Now, the cool thing about working with a query in SQL Management Studio is it color codes all this stuff. It makes it really easy to read. What I did was I changed the file paths. Now, it's not cool enough to, to wrap this around, so I'll scoot over to the right a little bit. But the default file path was c colon, was c colon vcloud.mdf. Well, that's not going to work. I don't want my database running on the C drive. And most database servers don't run their database files on the C drive. Mine runs on the E drive, specifically this long path. How did I find that? 
did it the old school way. Went to my E drive here, and you just have to know where it's at. It's in program files, Microsoft SQL Server, Microsoft SQL, blah, 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 here, Microsoft SQL, and then data. Make sure you memorize that. It's tested later. No, I'm kidding. So here we go. Here's all the data files for SQL. I just grabbed the URL up here, or the, the link rather, copied it, and then pasted it right into here. And there we go. Make sure there's a slash there. So I'm just telling it that's the path. So let's go over the script and show how it works. So the first part's just saying, hey, use the master database and create a new database called vCloud. The first name is telling it where to put the database itself. I'll scroll over again. So that MDF is the database file. And the second file is the log file, basically the transaction logs. And there's a size limited to it. So 100 megs grow at 10%, 1 meg grow at 10%. So it's pretty small. That's all that first section is doing. It's just creating the database, telling where the files go, and telling it to uh, use, uh, this is basically saying do it in English. Nothing that fancy. Let's look at the next script. It's saying use the new vCloud database and alter it in four different ways. So it's doing a little housekeeping there. All right, nothing, nothing too fancy there. The third script is telling you that it's going to use that vCloud database again, and it's going to make a user called vCloud. That might be a little confusing. You've got a database called vCloud. You've got a user called vCloud. But we're making the user called vCloud with a password of very secret. That's the password that I gave to it. Now, don't use a password that simple, but <laughs> I'm going to get away with it in this demonstration and for this lab. So it's saying the default database for the vCloud user is the vCloud database, and it's an English-speaking user. And the check policy is saying don't check the password policy for it. Creates the user, and there we go. That's the third script. The fourth script says go ahead and make that vCloud user the owner of the database called vCloud. And you're done. You could change any of these values that you want. It's up to you. I'm going to leave it default. The only thing I changed was the password and up here are the paths. So there's a play button up here. I'm going to hit the play button. Let's see what's going on here. That looks good. Making sure there's nothing remnant in here. Nope, that looks good too. There we go. Now we have executed the script. Basically, down here, it'll say query executed successfully. How can you check to make sure it was actually successful? Well, first, you tell the program improvement thing to go away. Then you go to the logins and refresh it. And there's our vCloud user. Now, if I get properties on the vCloud user, we can see that that person is mapped to vCloud, and it's a DBO, database owner. Great, that's what we wanted. We should also notice with a little refresh magic, there's a new database called vCloud. And if I expand that out, we should be able to see in security a user called vCloud. There he is. So he's associated to that database. And if I get properties on this database, I'll be able to see the permissions. I can see vCloud as a user of the database. So everything ran great. The query executed successfully is what we want. I'm going to click OK or cancel because I don't want to change anything. The database portion is now done. I mean, really, all you did was you imported a query by copying, pasting scripts, changed the path, and set a password on a user right down here. That's it. It's not that bad. All right, now that the database is created, we need to make a virtual machine running Red Hat Enterprise Linux Server to actually put vCloud Director on. Now, if you don't already have RHEL as a template somewhere, you'll have to go and grab it. So let me show you where you can grab the installation file. Now keep in mind, Red Hat Enterprise Linux is not free. So I can show you how to do an evaluation, but otherwise you're going to need to have an actual support contract with Red Hat in order to use this past the 30 days. So if you go on the web, you'll see uh, if you go to redhat.com, you get something like this, and there's a customer portal link right here. You can click on that, it'll open a new page. And then there's a bunch of choices. So we want to do a download under Red Hat Enterprise Linux that says Evaluations and Demos. Click on that. And right here, Red Hat Enterprise Linux 30-day evaluation. So that's what you'll want to do. 
and let's show all the content. There we go. So then download the free evaluation, keep going down the rabbit hole. There we go. Okay, so you'll notice I can basically fill out my information and I can get a demo of Red Hat. So let me do all the stuff in asterisks. So I am just a poor little end user and I just intend this to do for this for education. Great, submit the uh, request. And there you go. They will send you an email that includes information on how to download the file. Now I can go back to downloads. Okay, so now basically Red Hat's going to evaluate your request to do an evaluation. That's kind of circular there. And once they clear you for it, you can download the file. You're going to want Red Hat Enterprise Linux version 6.2 or 6 update 2. And it downloads, uh, I would say, about 3 gigs or so. So I've gone ahead and downloaded my supported version of RHEL 6.2 under my support contract. If you're waiting on your eval email, it usually takes, you know, no more than a day. It's usually for me, it's like 15 or 20 minutes and you'll get it. And then just follow the link and download it. Or if you have a support contract, just go under your support contract and download it. Now I'm going to walk through creating the new virtual machine that you'll need in order to build the vCloud director using RHEL. So I've got a folder here called demo and we'll make a new virtual machine in this demo folder. Now this is my management cluster in the lab. I'm not building anything in my resource cluster. So to begin with, we want a custom virtual machine so that we get more options. You notice if I click uh, typical, uh, some of the CPU options go away. They come out here if I click custom. Click next on that new virtual machine. I am very lazy with names. so I'm just going to call it VCD just because I only have one of them anyways. But make this as descriptive as you want. Again, it's the logical name that you chose. I'm going to put it in the lab, which is my management cluster. And I'm not putting it in a resource pool. In another lesson, I went a little deeper on resource pools, but basically that's a way we can carve out the physical resources into kind of logical containers. And it's just really not necessary for this kind of install. I'm going to put it on the data store that I use for virtual machines. And I'm going to make it a virtual machine version 8. That way I get all the cool bells and whistles that come with the latest virtual machine. And then I want to choose Linux. Now, fortunately, when you click, when you click Linux, it defaults to Red Hat Enterprise Linux 6. 64-bit. That's important. We want a 64-bit server. I'm going to give it just one core, which is plenty, and 2 gigs of RAM. That'll serve. If you have more, give it more, but one CPU and two gigs of RAM is really okay for a lab environment. It's not going to tax those resources in any real significant way. Now, this is important. Give it two NICs, because remember, we need two IPs, one for console and one for web, so we need two NICs. I'm going to put them both on my virtual machine port group, and I'm going to leave the default VMX Net 3, which is the higher performing, more fancy NIC as opposed to the E1000, which is more legacy. I'm going to go ahead and choose LSI Logic SAS for this particular install. I just don't want to deal with the drivers of the pair virtual and the performance on this particular virtual machine is really not that critical anyways. Make a new virtual machine disk. The default 16 gig, I'm fine with that. And because I'm on NFS, it's going to thin provision that disk. If you want to do thick provision, you're more than welcome. But to me, that's kind of a waste. Thin provision, especially for a lab, is a great way to go. So if you're in production and you're putting this in, it's more, you could argue more towards thick. But in a lab environment, if you're learning with this, I would just go thin. We're going to accept the default SCSI location, which is 00. And we really don't have any reason to put this disk anywhere other than the primary 00 location. Although you're more than welcome to change to any of these that you want. And there we go. We have a summary of what's going to be built. The main thing is that we have two networks and that we have a disk. I'd say at least 10 gigs or bigger. The 16 default is plenty. And click Finish. And it's going to build that empty shell of a virtual machine. And there it is. All right. The next thing you'll want to do is insert the ISO that you downloaded that contains RHEL 6.2. In my case, I'm going to edit the virtual machine 
click on the CD drive. And I have the file on one of my data stores. So I'm going to click data store ISO file and browse. And you'll notice I have a, a data store with just ISOs in it. Open that up. Sort by names. And there it is. Rel 6.2. DVD.iso. So like I said, about three gigs, and that's what the file name roughly looks like. I put the boot on there just so you can see that. You might think, oh, 236 megabytes for this boot ISO. I'm going to grab that. That is not the right file. You want to make sure you grab the DVD.iso. Click OK, and make sure to connect it at power on. Now, if you had it maybe on your machine and you were going to pass it through, then you could do your client device. Uh, or if you had it in the server itself, you could do host device. It's your choice. I'm going to do it that way. And there we go. Now I can power it on. And I'll open the console. And we'll get to go through this fun wizard. You notice when you first start it up, you get 60 seconds to choose which one you want to do. So I'll go ahead and do the first option, install or upgrade an existing system. Hit enter. And it's going to go through this little bit of text here. And when it gets to the GUI, it kind of goes a little bigger than my screen, so I'm going to have to shrink it just a tad, and we'll work with the arrows on the sides to get it to install. So the first option is to choose to test the media. I'm perfectly comfortable with this ISO. I know it's good to go, so I'm going to skip the test. To me, that's more for legacy physical media, like a physical CD. We don't need to really test it for a digital ISO. Okay, so now I'm going to move... The screen a little bit. I'm going to shrink this just a tad so that you can see it. There we go. And you'll see at first, if you have a smaller screen, like I'm running a, a, a smaller resolution, you might think, okay, now what? I just see an arrow and a guy with a hat on. Well, it's hiding down here in the bottom right corner. Here's the buttons for next. So you can either click next or you can hit alt N. That's why it's underscored. So next, or you can drag this little mouse here, little black mouse. So next. And for the most part, instead of clicking next, I'm going to tell you that I'm doing next and just hit Alt N, just so we don't have to drag this thing around all the time. So let me move it back over here. And I'm going to choose English and hit Alt N, which is next. And again, US English is fine for my keyboard style, Alt N. And let me drag this back up here. There we go. What kind of devices are we going to install? Just basic storage devices. We don't need anything specialized here. So make sure you're on the first radio button, Alt-N, to go next. And it's letting me know that there might be some data on this disk, but you and I both know I just created this thing, so there's no way there's any data on here. So I'm going to say, yes, you can discard the data. I'm fine with that. Now we need to give the uh, virtual machine a name. I'm going to call it vcd.glacier.local. So remember when I said you need to pick a DNS name, an A record, that's the record that I made in DNS was BCD. My domain is glacier.local. So the full name of the host is vcd.glacier.local. And we can click Alt N again for next. Now I need to pick out my time, my time zone, uh, which is my city. And I am in Chicago. So I'll scroll all the way up, 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 up to Chicago. I'm glad that they list all these cities for you because I'm sure that's very important instead of just uh, different time zones. But, you know, uh, my mouse is moving a little crazy here. There we go, Chicago. Alt-N for next. Now I need a root password. So in a lab, a lot of times I'll just use one password over and over because I don't want to have to remember 30 different passwords for an environment that really no one cares to hack into anyways. If this is your production system, make it really hard, make it complex, write it down into a password safe. I'm just going to use a very simple password, and you'll see what happens when I do. I'm using password, and it's going to say, man, that's a terrible password. Are you sure you want to use this really weak password? And fortunately, you're the admin, so you can tell it, yeah, I want to use that anyways. And it's not going to say anything else beyond that. But for the most part, if you get that warning in a production environment, it means try again, your password's too easy. For this, I'm going to use all the space, and then click Next or Alt-N for Next. And it's going to say, are you sure you want to do this? I'm about to nuke parts of the disk. Are you absolutely cool with it? Yes, I'm cool with that. Write those changes to the disk. And it's going to do all that work for me. And it's kind of like Kit from Knight Rider with the thing swipping back and forth. 
Now you get an option, what kind of server do you want to do? We're just going to do basic server. I'm not even going to go over the other stuff. Uh, it's completely irrelevant for this install. So just leave it on basic server. And then let me grab the side here. We'll go down here, and I'll just show you that I'm just clicking next. I'm not doing any of the other stuff. Oop, there we go. It gets a little squirrely on you. The mouse can be a little, little funky when VMware Tool is not installed. Okay, so now you'll see it's going to install like 600 different packages. You might think, haha, that's funny, he's kidding. No, I'm not kidding, 624 packages. So we'll let that install, and I'll be right back. Okay, now you have a RHEL server. Congratulations, and you get the cool little splash screen, you know, telling you that you did a great job. So let me scroll down to the bottom here, and there's a reboot button. Before we click the reboot button, I like to eject the CD so that it doesn't try to boot up into it again. So I'm going to edit the settings, go to the CD, disconnect it, and set it back to the default of client device. I wait. won't have to deal with the ISO trying to do anything squirrely and you know reinstall a second time or something. Click reboot. And the cool thing now is we won't have to deal with that weird screen resolution. It'll be just command line at this point with a small screen, which is much easier to deal with. So we'll let this boot up. And once it gets to the install page, or the login page rather, we'll move on to the next step. All right, so we have the login prompt. I'm gonna go ahead and log in just to have that ready to go. And the default login that I'm gonna use is root, R-O-O-T. And the password I put in was that super secret word password, which ends up working because we told it, I don't care if it's easy, I wanna use it. And it said, okay, you win, you're the boss. So now that we have vCloud Director server ready to go. We haven't installed the actual software yet, but we, we have the underlying server ready to go. We need to do a little more prep work. I know it's just tons of prep work in this thing, but don't worry, you're at the home stretch. Uh, we're gonna make some SSL certificates. Specifically, we need to create two certificates, one for each NIC. Um, so I've got the command here, and when you first look at it, you might think, wow, that is insanely difficult looking. Well, once I kind of crack you know, exactly what this is doing apart, it becomes a lot less intimidating. I will say this, though. I've never actually been able to memorize this command. So if you do, you give yourself a cookie because I always have to look this thing up uh, because it is quite so long and complicated. So let's break it down. We'll talk about the first command that you see. Key tool, that's a tool that we use to make or read certificates. So we're just calling key tool. That's the application itself. Then we're calling dash key store. We're telling it the key store we want to work with is called certificates.ks. So that's the key store. It's basically a file that contains keys. Key store. The store type is jceks. All that really means is that we have a repository that is of a Java format. It's a file format based on Java or, or that relates to Java. It's really irrelevant in the install. That's the one we have to use that vCloud requires, but that's kind of what it stands for. Dash store pass is pro providing a password for the key store. I've highlighted it in red because that's not the password you typically want to use. That's the default password in the command that is given as an example, pass WD. I will be using it here just because then I've got the default one, and in case you, you know, are following along with any of the scripts that VMware provides, you can be like, oh, it's past WD. But don't use that in production. All right, I've yelled at you enough. Let's move on. Dash validity is basically saying, how long will this certificate be valid? And the number is the amount of days. So 9,999 days. That's right. By default, I think the if you don't supply that, the the certificate will be valid for, I think it's three or four months then you'll have to make a new one, and that's that's no fun. So I go ahead and make it valid for, you know, like 20 years or something like that. Uh, then we want to tell it to dash gen key. We're saying we want to generate the key. And the key alg, the key algorithm, or crypto that we're going to use, is the RSA crypto. And it's basically these three really smart dudes put together this way to jumble up the numbers to make, uh, you know, a crypto key. It's definitely way over my head, but either way, we're going to use RSA as the algorithm that's used. The alias is kind of the name of the key, is HTTP. So there we go. You now have a complete understanding of all the different bits of this really long, complicated-looking key tool command. 
The second Keytool command is pretty much the exact same thing. We're just making the alias console proxy. So one certificate for the web, one certificate for the console proxy, and that's it. That's all we're doing. It's just we're going to run these two commands, basically. So let's dive right into the vCloud Director server and do this. All right, now that we're back on the vCloud Director command line, I'm going to go ahead and change to the root directory, uh, which is just slash, and I'm going to make a directory called prep. There we go. And I'm going to change into the directory called prep because this is where I want to build all my stuff and put my software, and this is kind of like my holding place for everything we're going to be doing going forward. So first I'm going to run the command, key tool, key store, uh, certificates is the name of the file that we're going to make using this key tool. The store type is jceks, which is like a Java type of uh, file storage for keys. The store pass is passwd. Again, don't use that in production, just for labs. <laughs> The validity is 9,999 days. We're going to generate the key using the key algorithm of the RSA crypto, and the alias will be HTTP. Whew, my fingers are tired. Oh, and I fat fingered that right there. I want alias, not A list. There we go. So what is your first and last name? Don't answer that. That's not what it's actually asking. It wants to know the DNS name of the IP that will be represented by this certificate. This is the web certificate, or HTTP. So we're going to be using vcd.glacier.local. That's the DNS name of my vCloud Director server. The organizational unit, we'll just call it IT department. Really, it doesn't matter what it is. Uh, my organization is Wall Network. My city is Chicago. I'm in Illinois and the U.S. Are we sure that's correct? Yes. Basically, this says the canonical name, which is kind of the who am I, is vcd.glacier.local. I work for the IT department of Wall Network in Chicago, Illinois, U.S. Yes, that's great. What password do we want to use? If you hit enter, it'll just use the same passwd of the key store. I'm cool with that. Put in whatever you want. I'm going to hit enter, and there we go. I'm going to hit the up arrow, do the same thing all over again, just delete the HTTP at the end and put in the word console proxy. Hit enter. My console proxy is a different DNS name. It's vcd-console.glacier.local. Uh, I like to use a unique name for the console just so I can differentiate the IPs in DNS. Uh, again, IT department of wall network in Chicago, Illinois, U.S., Yes, I'm happy with that. I'll use the same password. I'm going to hit enter. There we go. You can run this command, key tool, dash store type, jceks, store pass, passwd, key store certificates.ks, list, and it'll tell you, hey, there's my two certificates, console proxy and HTTP. All right, cool. So we're done with the SSL portion. We now have a, if I do a list here, we have a certificates.ks. I will say that when I list out the permissions, um, right now the certificates doesn't quite look right because you can only read the certificates. You can't execute it. Uh, it's missing, if I put these arrows, it's missing the X's here. We have read, read, read for the user group and uh, uh, root, but we don't have any execute. So I'm going to do this is something you'll need to do too. chmod change the permissions to 555. For certificates, I'm going to type certain, then tab, it'll complete it. And there we go. If I up arrow twice back to the ls command, it's now green because you notice now everyone can x execute that file. So that's important. Make sure to do that. Now that the SSL is completely done, we need to actually set up the personality of the server. Right now it's just a name and has some certs. We don't have any IPs, the firewall's still on, etc. So all I have to do is type setup. And we get this kind of pseudo GUI, the text mode setup utility. We're going to do two things. First, we're going to turn off the firewall. So arrow down to firewall, tab to run tool, and it has a star. If I hit space, poof, star goes away. We don't want the firewall turned on. It uh, causes all sorts of problems. If you're really good with IT, IP tables and you want to edit them yourself, feel free. I just end up turning this off. Hit OK. And it's going to say, hey, are you sure? You know, you're going to be turning off the firewall. Yes, I'm absolutely sure we want to do that. Next, I go down to the network config. Just keep tabbing over to it. 
and then tab to run tool. We're going to do the device configuration because we need to set the IPs for both NICs. So the first one is ETH0, that's uh, NIC0. Hit enter. And you see the cursor, it's kind of hard to see. If I go down, there we go. USDHCP, hit space to get rid of that. And then down again, I'm going to edit the IPs. So this one is going to be for the web. I'm going to use 100096. Put in my class C subnet mask, my default gateway, and I only have one DNS server, so put that in there. Tab over and hit OK. Now, what's interesting is before we had to just use the lowest IP was web. Here we're going to get to choose. So I'm purposely putting this on ETH0, but that's not, not going to automatically default to the web IP. So OK. Go to ETH1. Hit enter on that. Down, down, space to get rid of DHCP. And we'll put that IP in, 10.0.0.97. Class C mask. Put in the gateway, 10.0.0.200. And the DNS server is 10.0.0.4. Hit OK. And we're good to go. Save that config. DNS configuration, we'll put that in now. You'll see it's already got the vcd.glacier.local. So it has the host name in properly. We're going to add a DNS entry of 10.0.0.4. And a search path of glacier.local. I'm just putting in the domain name uh, for my search path because I only have one domain. If you have more, you can put them in there. Hit OK. And tab over to save and quit. And then quit. I'm going to clear the screen just to get all this stuff off here. Now I'm going to run a command ifconfig a for all. And what do you notice? If you look at ETH0 and ETH1, there's still no IP address. It's like it didn't work. Well, that's because there's usually one caveat we have to look at first before we can move forward. So I'll need you to go to change directory. We're going to go to Etsy. That's ETC or etc. It, but most people say Etsy. Sysconfig network dash scripts. Hit enter. And then we're going to look and see what's in here. So I'm going to list everything. And if I go up, there we go. We got an ifconfig dash e0 and an ifconfig dash eth1. We're going to edit those two files. So I'm going to run vi and then ifcfg dash eth0. So we're basically using a text editor within Linux to edit this file. Run this one first. Now the problem is on boot equals no should be on boot equals yes. So we're going to hit the letter i is insert and you see at the bottom it says insert now. Scroll down to on boot, and just using my arrow keys, I'm going in front of no, I'm hitting delete to get rid of it, and I'm typing yes. That's it. I'm going to hit escape, which takes me out of insert mode. Then colon, you see at the bottom I got a colon, WQ. That means write the save change, you know, so basically write those changes, and then quit. There we go. And now it says it wrote the file. I'm going to hit up arrow, and change ETH0 to ETH1, and we're just going to do the same thing. Enter that. Again, on boot no should be on boot yes. Hit I to insert. Arrow on to on boot no. Change that to yes. Hit escape to get out of insert. And then colon WQ for right quit. And there we go. Now all I should have to do is run a uh, service network restart. And I'll actually bring up those IP addresses. I'm going to run ifconfig all again, dash a. And now you can see, it's a little hard to see, there's the 96 on ETH0 and the 97 on ETH1. So we have IP addresses. So we've got all our IP addresses configured, we've got DNS configured, we turned off the firewall, and we have the SSL certs. The next step before we actually install vCloud Director is we need to copy the file over and we need to copy over one other file. That's that uh, libxdmcp file that we talked about earlier. So here I've downloaded a file called WinSCP. It's a program that I'm going to run. And this allows me to transfer files very easily between my desktop and the Linux server. So I'm going to put in that new IP that I got there, 100096. Use the root account with the password of password. And I'm changing the protocol to SCP. And it's going to say, hey, I don't know this fingerprint. This, this key is not in my database. Is this okay? Do you trust this guy? Yeah, it's going to say that the first time you connect to anything. So yes, I'm cool with that. And we're going to get kind of like a file explorer. It's a very familiar looking you know, uh, way to go. So I'm going to go on the Linux server. Oh, by the way, the Linux server is on the right, and my Windows desktop is on the left. 
So I'm going into the root up here, it's slash root. And then there's my prep folder right there with my certificates file. I'm now going to go into my file server for my vCloud stuff, because that's where I downloaded my bin file uh, right here for vCloud director. So I'm gonna throw that over there, copy that over there. It's gonna copy, and I'm gonna grab this libx dmcp file that I downloaded. And that was the one we discussed a little earlier where I've got the short URL where you can go grab it yourself too. It's only, what, 22 meg, something like that, or 22K. <laughs> it's very tiny. Okay, now I'm grabbing that libx dmcp file, and it should copy very quickly. Poof, like it wasn't even there. All right, so I'm going to get all this out of the way. Go back to here. Let's go into the prep folder. I'm going to change directory to slash prep. And we'll do a list, see what's in here. All right, so we have the files, but they're currently not usable. They're, they're only readable, and we can't execute them, which won't work. So what we're going to do is we're going to change the permissions on those, change mod 555 for the lib file. I'm just typing lib and then tab. And I'm going to do the same thing for the VMware file. Just VMware, tab, it'll complete it. And then we do a list again. And there we go, they're all green. We can read and execute all of those, which is what we want. So the first thing I'm gonna do is install that libx dmcp file. For that, you've gotta run rpm install, or dash i, start typing lib and then tab, it'll finish it, and hit enter. And that's it, done, it's in. Very simple, very painless. Okay, we are ready to install vCloud Director on the server. Give yourself a nice pat on the back for getting this far. Now I've gone ahead and cleared off the screen, so let's verify that the installer is in here. I'm just going to do a look in the prep folder. There it is, the VMware bin file. Uh, just do dot forward slash, I'm going to type VMware and hit tab, and there we go. It'll start uh, doing the install of the packages, and it'll ask us to run the configuration script once that's done. So. Do we want to run the script now? I think we do. Let's hit yes. There we go. So the first thing you have to choose is which IP on which NIC will be the web service or HTTP service. If you remember in another lesson on the appliance, it just chooses the lowest IP. But you can choose here. So I'm going to choose the .96 for the web. And I'm only left with 97 for console proxy. So guess what I'm going to choose for that? One for 97. Now we need the path to where the certs are. So I'm going to type slash prep certificates.ks. If I fat fingered it and goofed it up like dot K, it'll say, oh, there, there's nothing there. So you have to type it in right or else it won't even let you go any further. Just, just wanted to show you that. So if you give it the right path, it's going to want the password, which mine is passwd. And it's going to want a syslog host name for sending the logs. It's optional. I'm going to skip it on this. If you have one, great. I don't have one. Uh, now, database. All right, so we set up a Microsoft SQL database. So I'm going to hit 2 for Microsoft SQL. And the host name, remember, I have, I have the lazy man's lab. So mine's sql.glacer.local. I don't want to have to find that thing. The database port is default. Hit Enter. Uh, my database name is vCloud. We didn't change that, so I can hit Enter. And the instance is default. I don't have any other fancy instances, so I can hit Enter again for default. The username, again, is default. It's vCloud is the user that it sets up by default. And then the password, which in my case is very secret, literally. And you'll see, if you see this, this is good. This means that you connected the database correctly because it's running all the SQL scripts to build the tables and schema that it needs within SQL. If you get an error or it sends you back to the beginning, you know that you goofed up the IP or maybe the username or something like that. You need to go back to the database and fix it somehow. But that's this is a positive sign. Now at the very end, it's going to say, I'm going to launch the service uh, if you want me to. And this would be maybe if you were getting it prepped, but you didn't want to run it right now. So I'm going to say yes, start it now. I'm happy with that. The two services will start, but I'll caution you, it's typically about a minute before you can actually reach the vCloud Director web portal. So I'm going to let this bake for just a minute, and through the magic of video, when I come back, it should be ready to rock. All right, so it's been about a minute. 
I will go to HTTPS vcd.glacier.local. It's already filled in because I already checked it. And just like magic, there it is. Like I said, if you get a gray screen or something like that, you just need to wait a little longer. It's still setting up the service. Um, and there you go. It's now ready to be configured and become a real vCloud director server. That concludes this lesson. I hope you found the information valuable, and I'll see you in the next lesson.